Amar Musa has been the Secretary General of the League of Arab States since 2001. The Arab League, as it is called, consists of 22 countries and he has been working towards building bridges not only within that group but beyond. He is looking at resolving some of the conflicts in the Middle East and other hotspots in that region to make the world a safer place. He's also looking at the delicate issue of terrorism and the Muslim world. Welcome, Amal Musa. Thank you. Many people have expectations that the Arab League will probably build bridges uh, and resolve uh, many of the conflicts. Do you see that happen? You have been working on it since 2001. And uh, one may say that the results have, well, not really met the expectations Indeed. of many people in Indeed. the Arab world itself. Yes, you are right, and I, I accept that. Uh, because we are not the only player. A lot of foreign fingers in an area that uh, uh, goes through war, like the war in Iraq, or the Arab-Israeli conflict with all its dimensions regional and international uh, with all the fingers with all the the influence with all the money with all the weapons so uh, you cannot blame the uh, Arab League or any other organization or even the United Nations is being blamed for that because no problem was really uh, resolved and some problems have uh, gone even worse to, to a, a seri more serious situation but we are trying and uh, now we are very active in closing as many gaps as we can. Uh, Lebanon, uh, the Arab League, was very active to, to contain the, the conflict in Lebanon. Uh, the Arab League was the, uh, uh, the, uh, the owner of the Arab uh, Peace Initiative. Uh, uh, it was launched back in 2002 in Beirut. Uh, uh, so, uh, in Sudan and Darfur, we are doing a lot in Somalia, uh, but you cannot really uh, uh, contain all those developments without uh, full and sincere cooperation from big powers and uh, regional and international organizations. We are working with the United Nations, as, as usual, and with the African Union. Three of us are trying our best in Darfur, trying our best in Somalia. Uh, trying our best now uh, uh, in, in, in face of this piracy in, in uh, Aden, in the Gulf of Aden and Indian Ocean and Here, the mouth of the uh, Red Sea. So we are, we, we have a lot of problems and we are working to, to, to contain them. Uh, I can't say to solve them but just to contain them at uh, some time and to solve them uh, later on. What about uh, fighting terrorism? Um, and what are the initiatives that you are taking? Because there are um, well, many states in the Arab League that have been hit by terrorism and at the same time uh, have been accused of perhaps uh, shielding or funding terrorists. So how do you actually you know, resolve this? This accusation is, is a false accusation. We don't really give it uh, uh, much importance. Uh, but terrorism is a, an international phenomenon and international plague, I must say that has to be stopped and has to be resisted. So war against terrorism, uh, if it is conducted in a reasonable way with, with international cooperation and goals that are accepted by all of us, and uh, uh, a, a, what I mean by wise policy is not to uh, uh, just jump with the first fire uh, and, and say, ah, oh, yes, those are the Muslims that have... No, that, that's, not, that's not correct. International terrorism, because it is international, has several elements in, 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 in informing the mind and the actions, the plans, the crimes of those terrorists. We have seen them in the last 50 years or so in Latin America, in Europe, in Asia, and now and, and we have seen it in New York and, and, and so on. So our action has uh, uh, to be when all of us on one side, all of us reject terrorism and cooperate together in order to check terrorists. And we are all ready for that. Arab countries and non-Arab countries, all of us, again, are on the, same, on the same side, in the same boat against such crimes. Those crimes are terrorizing societies. 
And this is something that we, no, 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 no government, no people, no society can accept. What about your view on Afghanistan and Iraq? How do you see those two situations resolve? How would you like to see them? Well, <laughs> for how do I like uh, to see them? This is an easy question. I would like to see them uh, free from all foreign presence and moving on as uh, new societies, emerging societies, uh, peaceful societies. That is what, what we need for Iraq and for Afghanistan. But the situation in both countries is different. Now there is a, an agreement between the, the Iraqis and the United States that the U.S. has to withdraw by 2011. And by 2000, mid-2009, they have to withdraw from all cities. By the end of uh, 11 to, for, to totally withdraw. And within this, the intervening period from now until that date, efforts have to multiply in order to reach a national conciliation in Iraq. That's what they need, national conciliation that has to deal with and uh, put behind their backs the tension that has been built uh, between sects, between uh, different group of, uh, groups of people uh, on ethnic, on linguistic, on religious, on uh, uh, sect, uh, all this. It has to be dealt with. This is where Iraq would be or not to be. And that's where the Arab League would probably want to step in. That's why no, we have already stepped in. Have already in and uh, brought them all together since 2005 in a, in, a, in a famous conference in Cairo in the Arab League and all of them signed uh, a deal at that time uh, 2000 November 2005 but unfortunately uh, many powers regional and international involved in Iraq did not want an Arab solution for the Iraqi problem at that date 2005 I, I, I'm telling you again there is no other solution but an Arab solution for Iraq as an Arab country and with their identity as member, senior member of the Arab League uh, from the beginning of the Arab League. So uh, we are involved. As for Afghanistan, it's a different story. If you read what uh, President-elect Obama says that uh, it has not been managed well in, in Afghanistan, that they, are, they continue to move and then get back to square one. Uh, we hope that uh, in Afghanistan also the things would develop uh, in the same direction, that the foreign forces would withdraw, the Afghan society would cooperate in rebuilding itself. And also, uh, you know, the, the violence, the, uh, all policies, policies of violence and terrorism and so on, well, this is a serious situation, serious situation that uh, all of us should uh, cooperate in order to deal with it in a way that would rebuild rather than destroy. Will the Arab League uh, get involved in assuring the world about uh, nuclear, uh, non the, uh, Iran's uh, program being only civilian and not nuclear? No, no, this is the IAEA, not the Arab League. But would the Arab League want to be involved uh, in assuring we, the world? We would be involved based on the reports of the IAEA. If the IAEA determines that there is no uh, danger, so there is no danger. If there is danger, then we'll have to, to, to see. But this has not uh, been brought to our knowledge. It is not there until, until this moment that we are talking about. It is just the conflict about a possible military program. And there are negotiations with the six powers which take care of that. So we are following that with great interest because, as I told you, we don't need, the Middle East does not need any additional military program. It does not need also the Israeli military program, definitely. So if we can follow a policy, a balanced policy, that tends to rid the whole region from nuclear weapons and nuclear programs, then it has to involve Israel, as it involves Iran, as it involves all other countries, and make it only for the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. On the issue of piracy, yeah. you have suggested to have an Arab force right. in the region. Right. And, uh, in the Red Sea. And it is now on the table for consideration. And I believe we'll have to move along those lines in order to have uh, to, to, to maintain security in the face of this wave of piracy uh, that suddenly erupted. But what about the American forces that are already there and NATO? Uh, oh yes, not only American presence. forces. There are a lot of uh, forces. You're not against that, are you? Uh, this, they are in the Indian Ocean, by the way, not in the Red Sea. The American forces, Russian forces, You're French forces, NATO Africa. forces, and around the Horn of Africa. And the, that's why I called on Arab countries to form their own naval force in the Red Sea. And 
would you be actually augmenting what NATO is doing and working through? No, no, we can't cooperate against piracy. We are all on the, uh, the other side of piracy. Piracy is, 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 is a major crime. And it has been said that it is the other side of terrorism or one of the expressions of international terrorism. So we'll have to stand firm against piracy as such. But are you against having international uh, help on this issue, even in the Red Sea area? Well, it depends on uh, what happens, and it depends on the Security Council, UN Security Council, and what it decides. And of course, any resolution in the Security Council to the effect of uh, military cooperation in that vast region uh, would be based on consultations with all of us. But what this has view? not been done yet. What is your view as the Arab League on having uh, let's say NATO or that, the that's, US uh, in uh, that is why I called on Arab countries to form their own uh, uh, naval force and if this force can cooperate in, in, as necessary with uh, whatever other forces that are there in the region but I understand that there are no uh, forces, uh, there are no piracy cases in the Red Sea but in Aden and around the Horn of Africa. Amr Musa, we thank you for sharing your views with us and we wish you luck in your endeavours.